We're getting back on track here with Catherine and Emily, but as you know, we won't stay there for long because this is the Going Off Track podcast. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Going Off Track podcast. I'm Catherine, that's still Emily, and we're finally going to Monza. We're, we're finally having a Grand Prix in Italy, which is just really freaking exciting. I'm very excited. I love Italian races. The fans are great. Such a classic, classic race, uh, Monza. Very, very exciting. Um, like yeah. Catherine said, finally a race in Italy. Like we mentioned last podcast, Imola was indefinitely postponed, aka canceled. Earthquake in Argentina, <laughs> Winston jumping off the bed. <laughs> um, Imola was canceled for horrible, horrible weather in the region. Um, so we're finally going back to Italy, or not going back to, but we finally get to oh, race in Italy. Italy. <laughs> finally, finally, finally. I'm so, so excited. Um, yeah. yeah, so how, how's your day been, Catherine? Day, day's been things? good. Um, ha, you know, rough life right here. Had a workout, had some lunch, got a little bit of work done, tried to take a nap, but one of our Instagram reels was getting a lot of traction, so I kept getting notifications and just didn't put my phone on Do Not Disturb, um, which is a legitimate thing that happened this afternoon. Um, and then tonight I am going to watch as uh, the Nebraska women's volleyball program tries to break the women's sport attendance record by hosting a volleyball match in the middle of a football stadium. So that's my plans for the afternoon. That's exciting. What did you have for lunch, just out of curiosity? <laughs> Um, I had a little bit of pasta, uh, you know, I, I, I don't really cook. Um, I, I can, I can use the stove like a little bit, but I, it's, it's mostly just, you know, pasta and a ton of hot sauce. We're, we're really limited up over here. That's good. Not bad. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah. What about you, Emily? How was your day? Oh, my day. My day was started very early. Had to be at the office at like 8.30, teaching and training at 9, and then I took a training from 10 to 6, and then I was on calls until 6.30, and then I came back, did some podcast prep, and now we're here. But I did have a turkey sando. It's not quite the same turkey as in the U.S., but it's, uh, you know, kind of close enough. One of my team's orders sandwiches from this place whenever they order them. They know I love turkey sandwiches. So they'll always mm. be like, hey, do you want a turkey sandwich? And I'm like, yes, I Duh. do. I have this, like, I don't know, unnatural obsession with turkey sandwiches. Whenever I go back to the U.S., it's the thing I eat the most besides Mexican food. So my entire day in the U.S. is turkey sandwich for lunch, Mexican food for dinner. I'm pretty sure my parents hate when I come home because all they eat are turkey sandwiches and Mexican food for like two weeks, but they love me enough to put up with me, so. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so it was a very long day, but you know, just grinding away. That's how Wednesdays yeah. are, so yeah, very exciting. But I'm very much lo so looking forward to the weekend, honestly. I have nothing going on except for race weekend, so very much looking forward to a quiet Saturday watching quali and then watching the race on on sunday so yeah yep. yeah this and this should be this should be a good one we've got you know it you know it's one of the most exciting you know race tracks on the calendar one of the most historic and we'll, we'll talk about the details of you know monza and you know what you need to know especially if you've never watched f1 before um but yeah it's it's one of those really cool historic tracks that like everyone has a good time at yeah, no, definitely. And I think the drivers like Monza as well because there is so Absolutely. much history there. So it's it's a good one for, for the fans and for the drivers as well. So yeah. with that, should we get into some of the news of the week? Yeah, I mean, to, to be honest, it was kind of quiet news-wise. Yeah. There, there wasn't really a lot, um, but there mm -hmm. were still there's still a couple a couple of things that that kind of came out that that we can that we can talk about. I think that the biggest you know question mark that we have in front of us right now is definitely Lewis's contract rumors, um, and we have. Basically nothing concrete, though I did a little bit of investigative investigating um, yesterday, and and you know there's there's a ton of rumors swirling and like 
none of this like there there's a there's a strong chance that everything that's floating out there is completely untrue but we can still tell you what we do know um and and you know we'll just we'll see i think this just has to be honestly our first talking point of every single podcast for the rest of the season because i who knows when this is ever actually going to be signed but i love that we start every single podcast with lewis's contract rumors it's my personal yeah. favorite thing that we do. Um, but yeah, like like Catherine said, it's all rumors swirling. Nothing concrete. Um, yeah. There's yeah. stuff that makes sense, though. Like, I think, you know, some of the, the new rumors are that his the duration of this next contract that he's going to sign is through 2025, which totally makes sense because 2026 would be that next regulation change. Um, and that would be the perfect time to either renegotiate or retire. Yeah, exactly, because he'll be 40 years old. I don't see him, you know, sticking around as long as Fernando is. I just, him and Fernando are very different people. I just, I don't think he's going to stick around for another regulation change, try and go through a whole other change of car. I don't see him, because if he's going to do it for one year, you might as well do it for more. Like, I just don't see him being there for only one year of a regulation change. So I think for... I mean, I'm going to say for certain, in Emily's world of for certainty, I think he's only staying through 2025. I I don't disagree. I, I think that, you know, if we're going to have the Lewis Hamilton farewell tour, the 2025 season is a perfect time to do that because it's also saying farewell to these current regulations. Um, and I, I just, I, I don't think he wants to go through this again. He already had to, to, you know, struggle with a car in 2022 when those regulations kicked in after the, you know, end of the 2021 season that did not go his way. And that was very upsetting. And in my opinion, um, really, broke something within him and I, I just I feel like he's not the same driver I've, I've been saying this since the beginning of last season um, I just I don't think he is the same driver like some of it is obviously the car um, and we have had plenty of memes about Toto talking about how the car is a shit box um, which I don't get me wrong I love it but I think that you know some of it is a car but I think some of it is also like something broke in Lewis in 2021 and we're seeing that now and I just don't think that you know unless miraculously Mercedes is going to give them a brand spanking shiny new you know rocket ship I just I don't see him continuing to go on this path no I I definitely agree I mean I think in his younger years he was more inclined to really work with the engineers day in day out really develop the car and he's even talked about how much he's put into you know his steering wheel and how much it makes sense and how much he's changed it and developed it with the engineers and really worked on you know, different things with them within new regulations. And I just don't think in his, you know, towards the end of his career, the later years in his career, I don't think he has that in him anymore. I don't think he has that drive. And I think it is because something broke from, you know, we the, the unmentionable year of his Whatever career. Whatever happened in Abu Dhabi. <laughs> the unmentionable race. Um, but yeah, no, I think, I think you are, are so right there. Um, but... Okay, the, the one piece that you brought to my attention of the sticking point in his contract, I want to talk about this because yeah, I, think yeah. it's, I think it's so funny. So, okay, explain it for, for the masses and then I'm going to, I want to give my two cents on this because I think it's really interesting. Okay, so I, I don't remember which article I read this from, but I, I read this last night, um, that one of the sticking points to this contract and why he hasn't signed yet is how available Lewis is going to be to sponsors. Because, you know, Lewis is a race car driver and and yes he makes you know appearances especially during race weekends and you know in season he does what he's mandated to do but he doesn't love doing these like major sponsorship um appearances and but at the same time most of these sponsors who are putting down money um to be a part of you know the mercedes f1 team they're not putting up that money to spend an evening whining and dining george russell I mean, that's just, you know, to, to be honest, they're, that, they're not doing that. No offense to George. Um, but they, that's, or offense not, to George. Like, or, or full offense to George, depending on your opinion of him. Um, but, like, that's, that was one of the things that, that I think that is Lewis is still holding out on with his contract is negotiating how much time he has to do that. And I just think that it's, it's, it's kind of funny. 
It is. and But, like, it makes total sense. If you see him now on the grid versus... I don't know, several, several years ago. He has his AirPods in. He's very much in his own bubble, not really talking to anybody. And I know that's not sponsors, but it's still just interacting with, you know, the sport in general. He's very much in his own lane, not really interacting, very much kind of on his own, doing his own thing. And so I think this does make sense in line that he doesn't want to be super available. He doesn't do a ton of extra things. There's drivers like Danny who's all over the place. You see him everywhere. Same with, you know, Lando's pretty available. Um, There's a lot of teams where both drivers are doing a ton of social, a ton of PR, and Mercedes just isn't one of them. If you do see stuff from Mercedes, it's usually just George. And then, like, sometimes Lewis is there. And if Lewis is there, it's, like, very, very minimal. He's, I don't know. It's But it makes sense. But I think it's funny how it's, like, we bring up Mercedes sponsors are not paying just to see George. Yeah. Which is like, which is not a dig at George. It's Lewis is the, you know, world champion driver. George is not quite there yet, but it's kind of feels like it's a dig at George at the same time. So I don't know. Yeah. But it's, it it reminds (laughs) me, I I don't remember which, um, which grid walk this was, but on one of Martin Brundle's grid walks before a race, I think it was sometime last season, he made this comment about, um, I think it was like when Fernando was coming onto the grid during a grid walk and, and like, he made this offhand comment to being like, Ooh, I wonder what Fernando, you know, thinks about this. But, you know, I, you know, if he's also asked, you know, not to, to be interviewed, you know, prior to races. So we're going to respect that and leave him alone. I think that he went and, and you know, went to talk to a different driver. Um, but I just thought it was really interesting that, you know, you have a number of drivers on the grid who, you know, sometimes welcome that, that, you know, pre-race, you know, couple of questions. And then you've got, you know, drivers like Fernando, like Lewis, um, who you don't see in these pre, pre-race situations because they really just like aren't interested they just want to drive the dang car right well and even martin this season has even said like oh there's lewis but lewis does not do anything before the pre before race yeah yeah, he will not talk to us and we respect that um which i think one it's nice that they respect it um especially drivers but yeah that's it's interesting how some will talk and some will not so but i guess like i mean never being a competitive athlete at the level of an F1 driver, but, you know, previously competing semi at a high level, you know, pre-competition, I didn't want to talk to anybody. Like, I was in the zone. Like, I didn't even want to talk to my coaches sometimes. So I totally get it on that level. But sponsors, I feel like, is a different thing. But pre-race, I I get it's, like, 10 minutes before driving. Like, I don't know, headphones in ignore me yeah but. absolutely I just yeah so so that's that's the the alleged current sticking point to Lewis's contract which is supposed to be you know an exorbitant amount of money for for allegedly two years of racing uh so then the real thing is we don't know how true any of this is because Mercedes hasn't actually come out and said anything so we'll see we'll see We'll see. Yeah. But something else coming out too that's a little bit more concrete. Again, still up in the air, but a little bit more concrete. Um, Danny Ricardo is probably not going to be back in time for Singapore. Yeah. This one, again, really hurts. Um, I know we were kind of talking about how we were hopeful he would be back in time for Singapore, but it looks like the break in his hand was a little bit more complicated than they thought. So that's going to delay his expected recovery a bit. Um, Yeah. All along, though, Singapore was kind of, you know, a long shot for his recovery. Um, So, I mean, it's it's okay. Suzuka would be the next race after Singapore, which would be on September uh, 22nd. So that would be, like, almost a month after the break. Again, thinking in normal people terms here, Six weeks is, like, standard recovery for a broken hand. When I broke my hand, it was, I think I was eight weeks in a cast projected. It ended up being ten because I was still tumbling on my broken hand. <laughs> um, don't, do not suggest doing that. Um, I actually asked the doctor, like, how small can we make this cast where it's still <laughs> helping me heal? And I can still, like, move my arm as much as possible because I was like, I'm not 
missing competitions. So I still tumbling, which is absolutely horrible. But uh, yeah, so for normal people who are not, you know, tumbling on their our broken hand, it's about six weeks. So for him to just recover in four weeks, I think, is still a pretty good timeline. Um, for all the resources that Formula One drivers have, I think that um, Suzuka is more reasonable than Singapore and also Singapore is a extremely tough race I don't even know how you know last season Alex Albon hopped in the car three weeks after major surgery when he got his appendix out like I have no idea how he did that but that also goes to show just how many medical based resources these drivers have so I can I can see Danny being back for Singapore um and I could also you know I see that he it would take him the full six weeks to get back into the car in Qatar. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So if it's not Suzuka, which is four weeks, it'd be, you know, six weeks would be full recovery. That's Qatar on October 6th. Recovery. Yeah. So. Yeah, exactly. But we'll see. Either way, we just really want to see him back in the car as soon as is reasonably he- healthy for him to be back in the car. Um, and Because you have to remember, too, you're not just sitting in a car driving. You're pulling serious G-forces. Yeah. And that does have an effect on your bones. So that's something to consider. I don't know. Obviously, we're not mental or medical professionals. Uh, don't take any I'm the of daughter this. of one. Okay, well, <laughs> I know that still, that counts for for absolutely nothing. That means absolutely nothing, Catherine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I like to but pretend also. I know a lot of things because I've broken a lot of bones. But you know, that's <laughs> that'll do it too. Uh, that's a whole other story for another podcast. But um, yeah, but yeah, obviously they don't want to rush him. We'll see. And I don't we'll think see. they need to. I mean, they've got no. Liam Lawson, who had a solid debut. Um, you know, he finished P13 last week. He out um, outfinished uh, Yuki Sonoda, his teammate. Um, and he was also driving in probably the craziest racing experience that he's driven in a very long time because he had, you know, barely any practice, barely any time on slicks. And then, you know, every, every 20 seconds they were, you know, changing up tires and going from slicks to enters and back again. So... So it, it really, you know, it, it'll be really interesting to see this weekend how Liam Lawson is going to do having a full weekend's uh, full of, worth of preparation um, before, you know, getting into that car on Sunday. Yeah. Hopefully he has some, you know, better racing weather too. So. Also that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we've got a couple new sets of special liveries um, that have just been announced this week for this weekend's um, races. Um, we've got Ferrari um, and Alfa Romeo. They both have special liveries. So trying to figure out who's on track um, is challenging on a normal racing situation with how much carbon fiber is on these cars compared to actual paint. Um, but now the cars are going to look different again. Um, we've got... Um, um, Ferrari is commemorating the 24 hours of Le Mans win from earlier this year. Um, they've also debuted, um, they've announced new race suits for the drivers. They're throwing in those little bits and pieces of yellow. Um, and this is the, I think the second year in a row or the second year that I've been paying attention that they've had a new livery at Monza. Um, and while I personally think that the new race suits, um, make the drivers look like NASCAR drivers, um, which if you, you just you kind of have to look like a NASCAR race suit versus a Formula One race suit, and they're just very subtly different. Um, but I think that they look like NASCAR drivers, and um, we'll see how they do. They also could pass as like McDonald's employees. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we'll see. But yeah. I I think it's fun when they change up the livery. And for those who are newer to F one, the livery is like the wrap on the car. Um, or the paint on the car. So they will change it up from time to time. Some teams do not. Some teams will have the same livery, the same paint job, for lack of a better comparison, um, the entire season. But some will do special ones. So like Alfa Romeo had a special one last race as well. Um, The graffiti artist. Yep, the graffiti artist. McLaren had a special one honoring you know, certain races they had won in the past a few races ago. So certain ones will honor certain races or certain anniversaries, things like that. 
I personally think it's fun. It makes it, <laughs> like Catherine said, it makes it challenging to figure out who's on track. It's kind of fun to change it up. Some of them are really special and really cool. Some of them mean well and I think are swings and misses and I don't love. Yeah. I like when they do retro ones. Those are my favorite. Like when they bring back retro liveries for like anniversaries and stuff. Those are the ones that I personally like. So yeah, I don't know, yeah, Catherine. Sure. Do you like do you like the livery the uh, the livery change up? <laughs> yeah, I I do. I think I think that I I definitely think that they're fun. I definitely think that sometimes it's like the cars are really you know like really when you're when you said hit or miss sometimes it's really hit or really miss. Um, I have enough trouble as it is trying to figure out which you know which driver is of which car so it's like if if you know if a red bull car is driving really really fast on tv um it's it's hard enough for me to figure out is that max verstappen or is that checo perez um, it's probably but, max and it is probably max um but but yeah i think it's interesting I, I i like them you know sometimes they're they're really cool i think that alfa romeo has had some really awesome liveries this year they've been throwing in a lot of little bits of green they're gonna be they did that more um for for this um coming race because they basically turn their car into the Italian flag um, and it looks cool but I also think that if Alfa Romeo stopped changing up their livery every other week they might not have the same budget issues that they're having right now with trying to sign Guan Yu, Zhou Guan Yu to another contract um, so maybe they can like tone down the extraness and you just use their their livery I know that they're trying to like get around the fact that their car is underperforming but like I, I still think that it's absolutely crazy that he's at risk of losing his seat because of, you know, they they don't have enough money to, you know, throw at him because, you know, Alfred Mayo is leaving the grid. About this, I know, I, I know, I know, it's I know. It's because of the like, crashing. It's because it's, of the crashing I, 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 and the fixing. he's still solid and they're, they're, the car being shitty is not his fault. Um, yeah, but him <laughs> hitting the barriers and causing some damage. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but they're, they, if they can if they can afford to shell out ten million dollars for for Botas's contract allegedly, um, then they should be able to scrape together what seven hundred fifty thousand dollars, a million dollars for for another contract for him. And That's part fair. of this is Alfa Romeo is leaving Sauber, and Sauber is going to have a couple of years before Audi comes in to kind of take over the reins. So they're not getting like a ton of financial backing from Audi until Audi actually officially comes on the grid so I know it's very complicated but I also know that liveries are expensive too so is crashing into the wall yes you're not wrong <laughs> it's a two-way street that's all I'm saying trying to play devil's I, advocate here yes 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 of course <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah. So in, in other other car news, um, we have another young driver appearance um, coming up scheduled for this weekend. Aston Martin's Felipe Dragovic is going to be driving in FP1 for Lance Stroll, who will be hanging out in the garage and then will make his triumphant return in FP2 on Friday afternoon. Yes. Do you know, Catherine, how old is this kid? Um, that's a great question. Hold on. Um, he is... Because I just want to make a, you know, once a podcast, how old is Fernando Alonso joke here. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, um, so Felipe Dragovic is, uh, he's 23 years old. He was born in the year 2000. So... So was that. Fernando racing at that time? What year did um, Fernando start in F1? Uh, let's, let's go to the handy-dandy Wikipedia page. Uh, Fernando's first year in Formula One was in 2001. Oh, so close. Yes. Okay, so, so, so close. <laughs> so, because I was going to say, because he's getting to the point where some of these young drivers are going to be born the year that he started in Formula yeah. One. Yeah, like, and, and... Again, not to age... One of my favorite drivers, but... But also... But also, I'm going to age one of my favorite drivers, but not to age him in a bad way. It's just to show, like, the longevity of his career and how long he's been able to stay in this sport. Because if you yes. look at the career of a Formula One driver, it's, like, maybe 
like what five years six years seven years give or take not long. Yeah, these, these it's, longer it's, stints are not as common. No, they're really not. You lose your seat pretty easily. And so him being able to, granted he did retire and leave for two years or whatever, but he's been able to stick around and be a good driver who's still landing on the podium in, you know, his, what, 22nd, 20th season? That's insane. Yeah. Yeah, he and and you know there there are a lot of drivers that have been on the grid for a while, but like leaving the grid and coming back to it, as as you heard, if you heard any of the coverage around Danny Ricardo last year when he was leaving McLaren, it's not easy to do. Um, Perez's tenure, um, Danny's tenure, even for you know Fernando's, Lewis's these these are like not entirely normal. These are like the flash in the pan um, type of type of things that we really don't see. Um, and also to clear clarify for the, the this young driver situation um it's not just a young kid but it's also drivers who have um been in the the formula feeder series that are trying to get experience in f1 um so Dragovic has driven in these young driver um, f- um practice periods before but it's so it's not like you have your one year as a young driver and then you're it it's just you know, this is a driver who has not driven in Formula One who's getting an opportunity to, to drive the car during an F1 practice session. If, he, if these reserve drivers, young drivers, don't get these young driver, you know, opportunities, they'll never have a shot in an F1 car before just getting thrown into it. Kind of like Lawson did this last weekend, you know, just having to be thrown into an F1 car as a reserve driver because, you know, something happened to one of the guys who's actually driving every single weekend. So it's just an opportunity to, for them to get some practice laps in and get some experience. Yeah, so. exactly. And the experience that Drogovic will get um, looks like it's going to be dry. And you know, the entire weekend actually looks like it's going to be a, a completely dry weekend. Which is, it's weird that we actually haven't had a completely dry race weekend since Baku, which I believe was the fourth race of the season. And that was back in April. April. Yeah. That, I think which is crazy. insane. Which like, again, I've talked about this. I love rain weekends. I love seeing the spray. I love the quick mad dash for, you know, different tires. I loved in Monaco <laughs> when Max came on the radio and was like, enters, we need enters. Like, <laughs> Yeah. The the radio calls everything. I love the chaos, but also at the same time, I'm ready for just a dry weekend and just to see where things shake out. So we'll see. It should be a completely rain free weekend, but who knows? You never know. The, you the never weather know. Is still the weather. Um, I don't trust but... weather at all. Zero percent. I don't. Trust I mean, it. it's. It's what? What is it? Oh, it's 110 degrees outside my window. Um, so I wait. Just... Hold on. Fair uh, Celsius. That's like 39 or 40. No, 40. It's got to no. be in the 40s. No, it's like 42. Yeah, it's disgusting. Like it is. I think. Oh, like, I'm really bad at Celsius. Y- you know it's bad when I was at the gym this morning and I walked outside and it was 95 degrees Fahrenheit and I was like, oh, it's actually kind of decent out right now and it's only going to get worse. Um, so I'm just I'm just waiting for for the temperatures here in Arizona to just start cooling off because this is this is just disgusting and I'm not it's, I'm not into it. It's 50 degrees here right now, so ew, yeah, you suck. Well, it's what so it's tomorrow September, so we start our. No, no, two days. Oh, yeah, there's 31 days in August. (laughs) Yeah. Huh. Look at that. So, the end of this week will be September, and then I think we kind of start going into spring. You you should be going into spring. Yep, because you guys go into fall. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Let me tell you, my whole world has been changed and flipped upside down since living in the Southern Hemisphere. Oh, Oh, I can only imagine. Yeah. No, I'm constantly just hoping for the best when I say things. When I say words, I'm just like, maybe I'm right. I don't know. Yeah, but anyways, so. Getting back on track here. Let's talk about Monza. Back on (laughs) track. Jesus Christ. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Okay, so Monza. Again, located in Italy. So we are in the north of Italy, right? Yes. 
Yes, outside of so. Milan. Yes. Yes. Um, the racetrack was built in 1922, um, and the Italian Grand Prix has actually been a part of the Grand Prix calendar since the first Formula One season in 1950, but... Oh, Catherine, I'm going to stop mm-hmm. you right there. Mm-hmm. I think we have to go to Monza. <laughs> of course we have to go to Monza. You're a Ferrari fan. We have to go to Monza. But also for the history. Obviously for the history. We got to go. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, yeah, but one of the things. So, so the Italian Grand Prix, as it's named, is hosted at Monza, except in 1980 when the Italian Grand Prix was held at Imola. I don't know why. I was I was looking it up, and I, I wasn't looking very hard because it was like late last night when I was doing the rundown. To be honest, um, but it was. Um, I don't know why it wasn't held at Monza. If you do know, tell us in the comments. Um, but. Yeah, it was, I thought it was really interesting that they just, you know, scooted it on over and had the Italian Grand Prix in Imola. Um, but it's also, you know, Ferrari and Alfatari's home Grand Prix and also technically Haas's home kind of. Grand Prix because they have a European base that is also in Italy and they are in the uh, technicality umbrella. Yes, because Haas kind of, sort of shares a building with Ferrari-ish. It's like a separate building from from what I was able to glean from from Gunther's book, um, but there's like I feel like there's like a partition and that's it. <laughs> there's like a curtain, <laughs> and you have to like knock on the curtain, and be like, "Excuse me, are you done talking about top secret things?" Um, no, actually, um, it's I think it's a separate building, but yeah, they um, yeah. So Haas has their their European um, home base is in Ferrari's um, neck of the woods. Yeah. Ferrari has won as the constructor 20 times, which... That's a lot. It's a lot. It is a lot. Which is cool because it's their home race. They should win there. They probably won't win there should. this weekend, yeah. but they should. But mm. no, it, it's, it, And it's because of the yellow on their livery and on their race suits. It's, they, they, oh, never they, do well do well. they don't do well in yellow. They don't do well in yellow. We know this. Everyone knows this. Yet we keep putting yellow. I don't. When will they learn? I don't know. Uh, Lewis. Okay, That's... Lewis Hamilton and uh, Michael Schumacher have tied for the most wins as drivers with five apiece there, which is pretty cool. Lewis yeah. could break the tie this weekend. I mean, t- technically, yes. Technically, he so. could. Mm-mm. We. I don't need your your thoughts here, Catherine. I'm just saying technically he could break fine, the tie. Fine, fine, fine. So, there you go. <sighs> okay. Um, so, my favorite thing about Monza is the Monza curse. Oh, my God. The Monza curse is the funniest I thing. I love the Monza curse. So, for those of you who don't know, it's a newer curse, we'll say. But it is. It's a, there's enough significance here for us to call it a curse. So, since 2019... The previous year's winner DNFs the following season. So in 2019, yep. Charles Leclerc won. In 2020, Leclerc DNFs. In 2020, Pierre Gasly wins. In 2021, Gasly DNFs. In 2021, Daniel Ricciardo wins. Which, by the way, uh, Zach Brown had to get a tattoo because he won. So now he has an outline of Monza on his shoulder. And that is before he fired Daniel Ricciardo. And now he will forever have to remember Daniel Ricciardo. Hey, they mutually decided to go separate ways, remember? <laughs> of course. For $18 million. If, if, um, you're, if you're listening to the podcast and not watching on YouTube, I am doing lots of air quotes on the uh, decided to go separate ways part. Um, and I'm breaking you... my eyeballs, rolling my eyes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. That's sorry. what McLaren said, and Danny Ricardo <laughs> said, mm, 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 mm. "No." Uh, so, 2021, Danny Ricardo wins. 2022, Ricardo DNFs. So, in 2022, Max Verstappen won. 2023, what will happen? We shall see. We shall see. Oh. I mean, yeah, he he won last year. Charles um, was P two and George was P three. Um, and then what was also um, I think was a little interesting was um, the race ended under some controversy, and there were a lot of people who were not happy with how that race ended. Oh um, yeah, because of Danny's yeah. DNF. 
Well, I mean, it was less so the the DNF and more so like the marshals just couldn't get the car off track with enough time to resume racing. So there were a lot of people like, why was it ended under the safety car? Why didn't you just red flag it and do a sprint um, to, to the end? So there, there was just a lot of that. Um, coming out in and around that race that a lot of people were just like unhappy with and you know Max is really happy with it yeah I know and Monza last year was the debut of Nick DeVries the yes. former driver of Alphatari and it was and and because of of his performance in that Williams it was the race that sealed Nicholas Latifi's fate uh sorry oh, go, t- Latifi. go Tifi hope you're doing well at business school Oh, Latifi. Oh, so this year in Monza, it is one of the races in the new tire allocation test. So this like alternative tire allocation yeah. thing they're trying out this year. So it's the second of the tests. Hungary was the first. I don't know how I feel about it. But basically, instead of getting 13 sets of tires, you only get 11 sets and you have to do certain compounds in certain qualifying. So you get hards in Q1, mediums in Q2, softs in Q3. So normally in qualifying, you can kind of do whatever tire mix you want, however many sets you want, but you're really limited in your weekend, and you are limited in qualifying. You have to use hards in Q1, mediums Q2, softs Q3. Now, if there's rain or, like, impeding weather... In- inclement weather, sorry. I don't know my words. Inclement Impeding. weather. <laughs> Impeding. Um, if there's inclement weather, this will change a bit. But given that it looks like it's going to be a clear weekend, this will be the tire allocation for the teams. So what are your thoughts on this, Catherine? Well, I I don't remember it having a big impact on my view of qualifying during the Hungarian Grand Prix. Um, I know that they talked about it, but I also know um, that, you know, the 2021 season, you did have some tire rules um, about, you know, your Q2 tire was the tire that you would start your race on. So that did, you know, add a little bit um, more strategy in in Q2 and qualifying. Um, So I think that Formula One and the FAA are trying to bring something like that back. I don't necessarily know if I don't I don't necessarily think that it's going to have any sort of impact um on qualifying as a whole um I think you know the the qualifying program that we have right now I feel you know could be tweaked yes um but I don't think it needs to get like too fancy with how they how they you know change things up and do things for the weekend I think the limiting your tires from 13 to 11 makes it more interesting. It makes you have to, Mm -hmm. like, really look after your tires more. And I know a lot of the them going from 13 to 11 is also for trying to cut down where they can because F1 is really trying to be more environmentally friendly, you know, cutting cutting costs and cutting um, waste where they can. So I think that's fine. I think having to go from 13 to 11, I think that makes things more interesting. They have to look after their tires more. I just think it's weird how, like, you have to use hards, mediums, softs. Yeah. Like, yeah. that's the piece where it's, like, just limit them to how many tires they can use. Because then they're going to have to be more strategic in qualifying. Like, if you if you already limit the number of tires that they get over the weekend, they're going to have to be more strategic anyways. I don't know. That's yeah, just me. I think, I, I also think that, oh, my God, I had a thought. I did. Uh, oh, I don't remember what my thought was. Um, so sometimes a tire really does or does not suit a track. Um, and, and Pirelli doesn't always get the, the tire decisions right because they have, you know, for, for those of you who don't know, um, Pirelli, who are the tire provider to Formula One, they have five um, different tire types that don't include the inters and the wets, um, and they choose three of them. So they'll choose the C1s, the C2s, the C3s, or the C2, two, three, and 4, etc. Um, they don't usually skip also um when they're you know change, changing softness versus hardness um so a a 
soft tire in, in, in one race can be a hard tire in another, um, but they don't always get that right. And sometimes you have a tire that doesn't really suit um, the, the track very well. It just, it isn't good. And I think that this, you know, mandating a compound during, you know, a, a, one of the qualifying sessions, if that is a bad tire, that's going to really negatively impact qualifying in a way that I don't think serves the sport very well. Yeah. No, I 100% agree with what you're saying. So I just think it's interesting. Again, it's just a trial this season. There's This is not for every single race. This is, you know, the second uh, race weekend that they're doing this. So I think there's one more race weekend this year that they're doing this. I could be wrong. But I think there's only three where they're doing this alternative tire race. We'll have to double check that. But I think there's um, only a few of them this year. Yeah, yeah, there, so. there's there's only a couple and, you know, some, you know, I think that, you know, Formula One, the FAI, I think they are good at taking feedback. You know, there there's a lot of discussion still about whether or not to eliminate tire blankets. Um, and I think that the drivers will basically riot if they get, um, get rid of tire blankets completely. I, I just, I feel like that's something that they have been very firm about not being okay with. Um, and very and they, vocal too and very vocal about it with the the drivers association um and I, and I think that you know they that's why they've delayed it a year and I think that it will continue to be delayed unless they can find an alternative um I personally don't see an issue with the the tire blankets but that's an entirely different conversation that would you know that would take a lot more time and a lot more research that I haven't really gone into yet <laughs> uh, well some research that we have done yeah. is for the predictions for this weekend. Yes. And I personally am really excited for these. Catherine, <laughs> give me your podium. What's your podium? <laughs> hit hit us with your podium. And I know you're like, laughing because you're laughing at my podium. I am laughing at your podium still. I I, I want to preface this that when Emily was putting her podium um, into our rundown, I just have in all caps next to it, what is this? Um, and, and Emily responded. To which I this responded, is what- this is what dreams are made of. So <laughs> yeah. don't kill my vibe. Um, don't kill my I'm vibe. I'm not killing Catherine. your vibe. Give me um, your podium. My podium, podium is Max Verstappen in P1, Fernando Alonso P2, and Checo Perez P3. How boring is that? <laughs> but you know what? You know, that's fine. I will take that. I accept your podium. What's your yeah. podium then? All right. <laughs> so, my podium is Fernando P1, Carlos P2, and Alex Albon, P3. Because, like we just discussed, the Monza curse is going to get the best of Max. So, with Max out of it, Checo will be, like, so lost. And also, I would never put Checo on my podium anyways. But Fernando is going to get P1. Carlos is going to be the only person in Ferrari doing their job. And so he's going to get P2. And we've been, you know, blowing up Albon because he's been driving, like, crazy. I really think Monza suits... William's car and I really really think Albon is is gonna get a podium in in William's car so yeah yeah I can I can absolutely I not not only do I think that that he will I think that he deserves it and I think that oh absolutely driving we've talked about this a million times that he's just been driving out of his mind in that Williams and he is he's been putting that Williams so far up the grid where it you know may or may not belong um but yeah, I, I really want to see him get a podium. I really do. Like, can we not flashback last weekend? 36 laps on softs mm-hmm. in pouring rain in yep. Zandvoort in a Williams. Yeah. yeah. So he, no, he this, even came out and said, he's, he's like, I thought I was going to crash like seven times. Poor guy. No, yeah. yeah. So that is my, my dream podium because of the Monza curse. So I'm really sticking to it. Max is going to DNF. Okay. Okay. Well, we we'll, we shall see. Um, and and that said, um, speaking of Max, who did we pick as our pole position? Brunch, Max. 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 So yeah. yeah. So Max can get pole, but he's still gonna DNF. So, if you insist, I do. And then my favorite prediction, P ten. I oh, think we yeah. switched this week. 
Um, yeah, we, we definitely switched this week. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah so, so, so this week I picked <laughs> Kevin Magnuson. Um, and I picked to, Yuki. To the, yeah, you did. Oh um, my gosh, I didn't even realize that. No, that's no funny. I think, I think the, yeah, that's fun. I don't know. I hope Yuki can outrace uh, Lawson. Yeah, because that's going to cause some other problems that I just... I don't need let, for let's, him. We, we don't need I don't need Yuki to have any more problems. Yeah, yeah. He's he's already driving a really, really mediocre car. And I, even, even mediocre is one of the most generous things I think I've ever said about that Avatari car, to be honest. Yeah. Oh, okay, so what do you have as your surprise of the week? My surprise of the week is that your pr- podium prediction will be even remotely close to accurate. Yeah, you know what? So we didn't do this last week, but I think just because you're poking so much fun at my podium predictions, we're going to have to do like a recap of our predictions and our recap podcast. Because I yes, would like, we will. I, I think, uh, I just, I want one of mine to be right, hopefully. Yeah, um, yeah, we'll, we'll have to start keeping track of this, definitely. Well, we will, we will, yeah. So my surprise of the week is the Monza curse continues on and that Max DNFs. Um I feel like it's not really that much of a surprise because the Monza curse is a curse. We're kind of anticipating it, but a Max DNF well, there, is there a have been bit some other curse curses this season that Max has, um, you know, overcome, so to speak. I can't remember them off the top of my head, but I know that there's at least one that there's like, oh, this is a curse, and then Max is like, lol, I'm gonna win by 35 seconds. Okay, well, that's my surprise of the week. So, yeah. who's your who is going to do a dumb of the week? So besides the Monza curse, because I feel like that could be a dumb, um, I don't want to do it, but I'm going to pick on Logan Sargent You're going to make people on our Instagram mad. I know. Uh, Logan Sargent is going to crash again or have another failure. Something's going to happen to him. I just, I feel like he's under so much pressure now that he just, he's going to crumble and he just, he, he's not going to be able to handle it. So, this is something. exactly what happened with Mick at Haas last season. Yep, exactly. Right. It's like, hey, you have to do well every single race or your seat's gone. And he's like, oh my gosh. And he's going to do something horrible. So my, my pick is Logan. How about yeah. you? My pick is Ferrari. I think that Ferrari is, I mean, the, the bar is so low. Like, what, what Wait, does it I'm even sorry, mean Catherine. for Ferrari to not do a dumb? But, but who in Ferrari? The pit crew, engineering, <laughs> strategy, the drivers. I, we need to narrow this down but because it can't just be all of Ferrari. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's got to be the strategy. Uh, I just, you know, they, they have just been, like, the pick I, I try to to not go hard on, you know, calling out the, the pit crew because they work so hard um, and they are working just with the information that is fed to them. Um, and so I, 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 I really am always going to be reluctant. Any any pit crew, I, I, I would not, you know, want to call them out. Um, but for our strategists, I can call it until the cows come home because sometimes they make some really dumb decisions. I'm sorry, sometimes? <laughs> Every week. Uh, I feel bad. Like, yeah. again, taking a step back, we could not do their jobs better than they do. Absolutely we are not. We are pure spectators just, you know, joining in the masses of what they are doing to themselves. Um, not to, you know, pick on them too hard, but they have not really helped themselves out here. So. No. <sighs> but anyways... Yeah. I'm excited, but I am excited for this weekend. I think, again, it's hard coming off of Zandvoort because the Dutch GP was so entertaining and there was so much going on and it was just like, you know, mass chaos. I want this to be a really good competitive race. We'll see how it goes. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I feel like it could either be really, really good. I feel like it could be either be really, really good or Max wins by like a minute. You know what I mean? I yeah. feel like that's how yeah. this season's going. So I don't know. Those are my final thoughts on Monza. Yeah, my my I'm my final thoughts are it's race week, and I like that we didn't have a break between races because I am just impatient and love sports too much, and spend ninety percent of my life watching sports. And 
legitimately also need to change the channel in a minute to put that Nebraska vo volleyball game on in six minutes from now. Um, but um, I'm so go. sorry that this podcast is interrupting your life, Catherine. <laughs> oh no, this is it's so so terrible. I have to talk about sports for an hour with one of my friends. Oh my gosh. So that's no. my final thought. Um, <laughs> don't forget to join us on Instagram at going.off.track for our coverage all weekend long and other breaking news and other anecdotes and things that will happen. Um, and uh, Monday's race recap will be out at 9 a.m. Eastern. Yep. That's it for the podcast. Thanks for going off track with us, guys. <laughs>